Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. We have more news from the Game Developer Conference going on right now, and this news is coming from Amazon. Now you may not realize that Amazon is such a big player in the gaming space, but mostly on the back end. Now they tried it with Game Masters with the whole Lumberyard thing, we know how that turned out, but they've also been very successful in terms of running servers for people, but they've also made some announcements today with AWS for games, and some of this is quite interesting to me. So we've got uh, a few new products being launched, we're going to go over those in a minute but the thing I find most interesting is actually the cloud game development portion of this so we're going to focus on that first but we're going to come back so here's the blog post talking about things the new products they are announcing uh, that we'll come back and cover later on are game sparks and game kit but the other big thing here is Amazon Nimble Studio. And that's the part I find probably the most interesting. This breaks down Amazon's various different technologies, which, by the way, get very confusing very fast, uh, into different categories. And the part that I find most interesting in this announcement is the new cloud game development stuff. There's nothing really special here. Have you ever heard of Shadow? I covered them before they went broke on the channel. They're basically virtual machines that run in the cloud that you can do game development on. Amazon are now offering the same thing. They've been offering virtual servers for ages and ages and ages. And now what we're starting to see is more in the, if you need to bring up a virtual machine for using Maya or Max or Unreal Engine or whatever in the cloud, you are going to be able to do so. And due to the integration with various different partners, you're going to be able to get a lot of pre-configured machines to do stuff for you. Uh, so a good example that they're using right here, solutions enable studios to build distributed uh, development pipelines, reducing the risk of blah, 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 blah. Well, here is one that's really interesting. While well, using Amazon Electric Cloud Compute EC2 Mac instances to build and test iOS and macOS games. So there is one use you may have immediately. If you do not have a Mac, but you want to build and test for iOS devices, you could spend four grand on a Mac machine, or you could just spin up an EC2 instance of Mac, uh, you know, have Xcode, whatever, pre-installed on it, do your build and test it, do the, the, the signing and upload and so on. So that is one particular advantage of using something like cloud game development. On top of that, we have two real big products here, Studio and Workstations. I can't really tell where the one ends and the other one begins, but I think in some ways, Studio is sort of more of a for handling the whole organization, whereas a Studio would be a collection of Workstations. It's the best I can figure it out. On top of that, they have a number of pre-configured solutions for things like uh, the build pipelines, if you're doing continuous integration delivery, uh, or if you're doing your own hosting, your own version control instead of using something like Git. So you can have their servers that have already been by their partners, such as JetBrains, pre-configured versions of various different um, version control systems out there that you can spin up. Nothing there new. By the way, they still have uh, Lumberyard. It is now called Open3D Engine, and it does have tight integration into uh, Amazon's uh, technology backends. Uh, so uh, that is the cloud computing side of things. On top of that, we've also got some improvements in the world of game servers. This is where they've been forever with products like GameLift um, and so on. But the cool new things that we were talking about are those um, those new additions. We'll get back to them in just a second. They're down here under Live Ops, Game Sparks, and Game Kit. They've also got uh, partnered stuff. Uh, they've got things here for uh, doing game analytics. They also have technologies for artificial intelligence, machine learning, and game security. We're not going to go over that. The number of web-based offerings that Amazon have at this point in time are absolutely obscene. But first, back to cloud game development. So they have kind of the two technologies on the go. Nimble Studio for like basically um, spin up a whole game production pipeline for doing visual effects, for doing builds, storyboarding, so on. Uh, and then workstations where you can basically create virtual machines on the fly that you stream to uh, as you need. And the big thing here in the technology state of things is nice DCV over QIC. UDP. So basically, this is the uh, protocol that they are using to send data. And what it allows you to do is run 4K streams at 60 frames per second remotely, assuming, of course, you have a solid internet connection. Now, um, this is no different than what GeForce Now is offering. And in fact, I, I don't remember the name of it, but Amazon has their own streaming service, same with Stadia. But this is giving you full blown machines that are pre configured for the world of game development or 3D uh, work and so on. But the underlying technology and the underlying machines that you will be using are nice DCV uh, for Windows. I believe there's also a uh, Linux version as well. And they've got partnerships with things like side effect software. So Houdini, uh, I didn't find Autodesk out of the box, but I'm assuming it comes soon. Hopefully you get it so that you could actually license um, Autodesk products as you need them. It's not announced yet, but that would be very cool. So you could actually bring it up and a license to go with it. It's the kind of potential of what they can do, but they are not there now. So if you go to the AWS marketplace, for example, I can come in here and search for Epic games. 
And what we're going to find is Epic Games as a partner actually provides an AMI or an Amazon machine image. This is something that basically you can say, create me one of these and a few minutes later you have a virtual machine pre-configured for the latest releases of Unreal Engine. And they keep updating them as new versions of Unreal Engine are brought online. Uh, so it's preloaded with Unreal Engine and all the prerequisites. Um, so the launcher, the, this is nice, Epic Games launcher is completely optional. And again, it is using nice DCV for the responsiveness, high speed, and so on. So this is a pre-configured version of Unreal Engine ready to go in development. Of course, you can add your own software on top of it. Now, where it comes to confusion with Amazon always is the pricing. So what kind of price are we looking at for doing this? Well, that comes down to where you are and the quality of machine you need. So in this case, a GD, G4D2X large machine, which is eight CPUs uh, and a 16 gigabyte NVIDIA GPU and a quarter, sort of 225 gigabytes of SSD storage um, and up to 25 gigabytes connection via network will cost you uh, $1.12 per hour, which is actually very, very reasonable. Now, if you get into different regions though, you're gonna find the price changes quite a bit. So let's go to London and you're looking at 120. And I think Asia is actually a lot more expensive. So let's go to Tokyo, yeah, so $1.38. But still, if you're just using it in burst capacity, there you see, but if you wanna scroll, um, make your machine a whole lot bigger. So here you got 64 cores, uh, again with a GPU, 900 gigabytes of space. And here you got up to 96 cores. Mind you, if you do this, uh, you're at $15 an hour uh, for the EC2 connection. And of course, I don't know if there's ever any hidden fees. It's always a little creepy when you're dealing with Amazon. Uh, but basically, Amazon has been providing virtual service forever. What they're basically now providing is virtual pre-configured game development workstations, which is pretty neat. So that's the game gaming cloud side of the announcement. We've also got a couple of new technologies being announced. One is Amazon GameSpark, available in preview format. Now, in essence, GameSpark can be thought of as pre-configured um, back ends that you, you can use in your game client. So if you need to do things like player authentication or messaging, you need to store data in the back end, you can basically use these pre-configured building blocks to do so. I do really wish they did a nice just list of what their pre-configured building blocks were were. Uh, so you can see kind of how it works there. So your game comes in, um, you've got access to using game sparks to things like player auth, code execution, data storage, and so on. Uh, there is also this visual web programming language of some form I'm not actually familiar with, but you can build it with cloud code. I don't know how cloud, cloud code actually works, but you can extend and build it that way. There's a full API available as well. And you manage it all through the game sparks console. So if you're looking for a backend provider for your game, you need to do things like leaderboards or matchmaking or authorization or so on. And for some reason, the plethora of other options out there, including ironically enough, Epic Games, who is an AWS partner. And I think they actually, their uh, online gaming services, I think are hosted on Amazon. Um, they offer this stuff for free. So I'm not 100% certain what the value proposition is going to be behind uh, GameSparks, uh, but that is kind of the idea. So if you need to have a back end and you want to do it on um, Amazon technology, that's where GameSparks come in. Now, if you want to do something a little bit more integrated, there is now also AWS Game Kit. Now, this is specifically for Unreal Engine. Um, it's a plugin for Unreal Engine to configure and deploy AWS resources to support each cloud-based game feature. Custom API libraries and built-in samples make it easy to incorporate feature functionality into the front-end game code to communicate with back-end services. So basically, it's an interface layer to the AWS cloud for Unreal Engine developer. If you're interested, this one is open source. So you can see the integration game kit would wrap over features like uh, S3, which is their storage system, uh, DynamoDB, Lambda, etc. cetera. Um, using the game kit layer or wrapping. This is open sourced. It's under the Apache 2.0 license. Again, it is just for Unreal Engine. Uh, you need to use Unreal Engine 4.27. It does say any version later than 4.27 will work. Um, Okay, let me read the sentence again. Changes are not backwards compatible between Unreal Engine versions. Use any version later than 4.27 using, I think, okay, this is bad English. Using any version later than will result in work that others cannot use. 
Okay, I'm not 100% certain if that means you can use it past 4.27, because the big question I ultimately have is, can you use it in Unreal Engine 5? And the answer is, no idea. Uh, but if you want, it's an Unreal C++ project for working with uh, AWS uh, technologies in your game front end. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the extent of the announcement. If you're interested in more about AWS for games, these were just the new ones we focused on, the game, the cloud gaming, the game kit, and the game sparks. There is a ton more beyond that. Uh, so they do have a portal portal page for stuff. They basically got, you know, talking about people that work with their technology, breaking it down by the various different categories, all the various different uh, features and softwares they run. So they do still have traditional uh, server hosting and so on if you're interested. Uh, but if you want to check out AWS for Games landing page, it is available at aws.amazon.com forward slash game tech. And that is that. Let me know what you think of the idea of having your virtual computers in the cloud for streaming. If you've got a good solid internet connection, let's put it this way. My productivity goes to squat when my internet doesn't work anyways. So I can see this making more and more sense, especially if you have like a backup machine that's okay, but you're using super powered machines, especially if you're doing super powered tasks that you deploy on the cloud. One of the nice things about deploying Amazon services, they come online very fast and you can also bring them offline quite quick as well. Now, I'm not sure what happens with your persistent storage. How much you have to pay to have like the the storage that you're not using when your machine is offline pricing in amazon is always a confusing prospect uh, but the idea of cloud game development using aws tech is one that does appeal to me especially after using geforce now and shadow beforehand and seeing just how well they actually work so this means you can do supercomputer level tasks on something like a surface or um, you can run across platforms you can you can do uh, game development on um, a linux machine using tools that are only available on windows and all of the stuff is running remotely so basically your machine is just using the same level of resources as if it was streaming netflix at 4k so that is pretty cool also you look at the scenarios like where you need to do a build for ios but you do not have a Mac in your build environment, use AWS for it. So AWS for cloud game development. Also, uh, GameSparks and GameKit. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.